Andy here, we're at the 2021 Mountain West Overland Expo and I am so excited to be reconnecting with Kevin Mollick who's the owner and founder of Timberleaf Trailers. Now I've been following Timberleaf for quite a while. Uh, last time we chatted was a few years ago, had a great conversation and just really excited about the continued growth of the company and really the excellent product that you guys offer. So Kevin, I know a lot of things have changed since we last talked. We've gone through COVID, uh, you guys have grown, you've moved. Uh, just tell me what's, what's going on with Timberleaf Trailers these days? Well, of course, as you expect, I mean, we have grown exponentially. Yeah. So but we were going before the pandemic, frankly. Mm -hmm. And so we've done really well since the pandemic. But quite frankly, you know, we can only handle so many orders. So we're yeah. building as quick as we can. Mm -hmm. um, we have introduced a new trailer, I believe, since you last talked about yeah. four years ago. Yeah. That's not here today, but I think what I can share with you is that the, the model we do have today, which is the classic and the bike. Model. Great. Well, I guess starting out, you want to tell us just a little bit about the two models you've got here and what some of the key differences are between the Classic and the Pica? Yeah, you bet. So the Classic basically is 5x10 trailer. Okay. Same exact components are in that underneath the trailer, in other words, as compared to the Pica. Okay. So the Pica is 4.5x8. Uh -huh. The Pica has a full-size mattress, whereas the Classic has a queen-size mattress. And as you would appreciate it. The queen size mattress is actually a full 80 inches long. It's wow. not just a RV queen, if they call it, you know, it's 75 or whatever. Sure. Um, the mattresses are a really plush style mattress. They've always been a really nice mattress. The, the Pica, on the other hand, has a, a full size or a double, uh -huh. and a double, a true double. In other words, you could buy a, okay. a mattress off the shelf if you wanted to. Put sure. It it actually has about a clearance of 77 inches. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty nice spread, in other words, even though it's a very compact little trailer. What you need to understand, and a lot of people don't get, is when you look at the two trailers, either trailer can be outfitted with any of our suspensions. Great. Yes. So this one has a lower all-road suspension, we call it. Okay. This one has what we call the off-road suspension. Okay. Right? But either one can have the off-road or the all-road. Sure. Okay. And what specifically is the difference between those suspensions? There's, I'm assuming, a lift of some sort on no, the off-road? Exactly. So they both have the timber suspension, the actual suspension. Okay. The Pica, and this particular Pica, in other words, has a four-inch lift. Mm -hmm. What that equates to, basically, is a four-inch, it's a big drop spindle. It's a different spindle on the trailer, but it equates to a four-inch lift, as well as the tire being bigger, gives you at least five inches of spread in other words, of those sure. trailers. Um, so, so this trailer, for instance, has about 13 inches of clearance. Okay. This one has equipped, because it doesn't have a box, it's 23. Holy smokes. But, but admittedly, <laughs> you know, but if you have this trailer right here outfitted with the all with the offered, uh -huh. by raising it five inches, it would bring it up to about 18 inches. Wow. Okay. But that's because we have a box underneath on the classic, not on the pipes. Sure. Wow. A ton of ground clearance, which yeah. is totally appropriate for the Overland Expo, I must say. Yeah. Now, one of the things that stood out to me, Kevin, is your color scheme. So I did a tour, and there's quite a few camper builders here, but it seems like most of them you've got black, white, or gray. Yeah. And I know Timberleaf has a quite a wide color palette. Is is that intentional? And yeah. Has that it's been? it's by design. I mean, years ago. I decided there's no reason to hamstring ourselves and do just the basic black and white or gray. Uh -huh. uh, and we have those, uh, yeah. but we have a dozen others that you can choose from. Um, what we're known for and well known for is our aesthetics. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's a true teardrop shape, yeah. as well as the, the colors and, and the, the aesthetics. Yeah. In other words, we want the trailer to be a fun thing to own, not yeah. just something that you park in storage and bring out only when you need it. Uh -huh. You know, people are proud of these things. They, they love showing them off. Yeah. So we have some bold colors. That's great. Well, let's get back into the kitchen here, Kevin. Now, I know that since the last time we talked, you've made a few modifications to the galley area here. Could you just walk me through kind of the space and the function of everything? The biggest change I think we have done since we talked a few years ago was to redesign the entire galley so that we can incorporate food. That's wow, been a yes. big challenge. 
So it was completely redesigned so that we can now offer one of three different coolers or fridges. We offer the Dometic fridge. Uh -huh. We offer a handmade wood cooler that we offer. Okay. And another cooler that's just basically a um, canyon cooler. Okay. But yeah. it's about the same size. But I'm getting sure. They all have the same capacity mm -hmm. in the end. Uh, but what that did was raise the countertop up a little bit. It made this fridge or this uh, sink cabinet here wider. Okay. So yeah. there's, a, in fact, there's a divider in there for cutting the edge. Like oh, that. nice. This is great. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of storage in this space right here. Uh -huh. So then also uh, we raised this roof quite a bit. So from the old model, this has gone up a couple of inches. We've maxed out the stove. We still have a partner stove, which is still top of the line as well. Yeah. Open, so. It's a beautiful stove, absolutely. I'm just going to pull this out here and check that out. Yeah. I love the, the function of the space. Not only uh, does it do I fit under here, but I also have this extra space on top that I can be prepping food or getting things ready. So it's just really functional. Um, tell me a little bit about the finish on this. This is a really cool retro laminate. Yep. Yeah, all the laminate we put on our countertops is actually printed specifically for us. Okay. This is not off the shelf manual. It's a very 60s, mid-century retro boomerangs and things like that. Yeah. Um, and in that we offer at least a dozen different designs and colors. Uh, we've worked really hard to keep the aesthetics yet while maintaining really high quality. In other words, everything about the, the trailer is about minimalism. Yeah. Even little details like this edge here. It's just thick enough to support what we need to support. It's perfectly strong to support anything you put up there. But it's not a thick countertop edge like you've seen at home. Right, right. Even the sink, you might notice the sink is different from what we used to have. Yeah, the sink does look different. Tell me about that too. Well, if you've ever seen the standard bar sinks that you can get at a big box store, uh -huh. they have a two inch lip up all the way around yeah. this and a three and a half inch lip back here. They're bulky, they're kind of clunky looking. Yeah. I wanted to maximize the usability of the sink while keeping the footprint as little as possible. Okay. So we've been able to source these at a restaurant supply place. Okay. And, and that's just a small detail. Yeah. But it maximizes the amount of space that you can use on your cooking, uh, your prep area. Well, and I love this too. Your faucet is also flexible. So if you had a big pot yeah. or something you needed to get under here, not a problem. Yes, okay. yeah, exactly. You got it. That's really cool. One of the other things that stood out to me, Kevin, was this this windscreen? I did not see anything like this on any other teardrop. No, Tell me in about fact, this. that's brand new. So the windscreen, we're just starting to develop it, and in the next few weeks, we hope to have a, a finished prototype and we'll start offering this. This is meant to keep the rain, <laughs> the wind out of the galley if it's really bad weather. And you don't want to stop cooking necessarily just because you know the weather is bad. Yeah. So. By unsnapping all these, I mean it rolls Whoa. up in just a little tiny tight bundle. Yeah. So this is going to be a new feature. So the wings will come in pairs. We'll put one on each side, as well as we've got uh, an awning up here that can protect you from the elements. Cool. Well, having cooked in the rain myself many times in my teardrop, uh, that's a much needed addition. So that's great. We like it a lot. Cool. Well, let's go around. I'd love to take a look at the inside and just learn a little bit more about uh, what's going on in the cabin. Great. So, Kevin, I'm really interested to learn a little bit about the interior of the cabin of the trailer here. And one of the first things that jumps out to me is just the finish. I mean, this is like a furniture quality finish. How do you, how do you achieve that? Well, a couple of years ago, we had decided we really wanted to strive to get a zero VOC finish. Oh. And, and that's a challenge because zero VOC finish basically means waterborne finish. Yeah. To spray a waterborne finish on and get a true furniture quality, slick, smooth finish yeah. is a challenge. It took us quite a while testing different equipment, different, te different techniques, but we've achieved it and yeah. we've gotten very good at it. Uh, so basically that's saying that everything inside of our trailer as well as the galley is zero VOC. Yeah. That's been a big game changer for us because now you close this trailer up for a few days at a time or weeks if you want to 
you get back in and there is no scent at all. Right. Know? There's no gassing off. Yeah. And that was huge for, for me in particular because I have a pretty sensitive uh, smell, uh, sense of smell. Yeah, that's wonderful. One of the other things that jumps out to me that I've definitely not seen anywhere else is that control panel uh, up under the cabinet face. What is that oh, about? That, that's our heater. So yeah, that's <laughs> come about in the last year or two as well. So now we have finally hit on a really nice heater. Uh, all you see in the cabin here is just the little control panel yeah. as well as two little vents there underneath the cabin. Under yeah. The um, but other than that, there's hardly any clue that we have heat. The heater is actually mounted underneath the trailer, and it's a Propex heater. Okay. The Propex heater has a sealed combustion chamber. Oh, so the yep. sealed combustion chamber means that uh, there's going to be no off-gassing from the, from the propane fumes or whatever, the flames, in other words. Sure. Okay. So um, because of that, in other words, whatever heat comes up here is, is pure, and, and there's nothing... Uh, there's no chance of carbon dioxide builds up. Oh, that's amazing. So you could take this, uh, I mean, all four seasons, even ski camping. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's awesome. With <laughs> all the insulation we put in our cabin and all the insulation in the roof and the walls, mm -hmm. it takes very little heat to get this to toasty warm temperature. Sure. Wow, that's just incredible. Well, it's a beautiful cabin, and uh, I'm sure everybody sleeps like a baby in here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's cozy. Yeah. yeah. It's like a cocoon. What's the size of the mattress on the Classic here? Oh, the Classic is actually 57 by 80. Oh, so wow. 80 is the critical dimension that a lot of people, like yourself and others, yeah. have a big issue with, because a lot of people can call a queen a RV queen, Sure. in other words and be 75 or 74 inches or whatever they want. Yeah. Our length is truly 80 inches long. The width is 57, uh -huh. so a tad narrower than a conventional queen mattress. Okay. But the length and even the foot room is, is plenty ample for somebody 6'8 like yourself or 6'3 like myself. Oh, it's just incredible. That's incredible. Well, let's pop up front. I wanted to take a look at this box and the setup you've got for towing. Oh, okay. Cool. So, Kevin, tell me a little bit about the front of the camper and the tow area. And specifically, I'm really interested in how you secure something that is really this big and, and also this valuable. Yeah, we came up with a lock that's our own design. Uh -huh. So, we totally realized that people are insecure about leaving this trailer in the woods. Sure. In the middle of nowhere and just picking over still there in the back. So we came up with a lock design that we feel is impenetrable. Yeah. Um, it's got a puck lock, like a hockey puck lock right here, which a lot of people know of the lock being really high quality. But the key here is not just the lock, but the inability to get behind the lock to pry it off. So the way this works is normally, this is part of our hitch assembly. Uh -huh. This is normally in that receiver. Sure. But you pop this out, hold the pin in other words, and you put this piece in from behind. I don't have a key to unlock it right now, but this goes in from behind, this goes over it, this C-shaped piece, and the lock locks into that little C-shaped cylinder. So, in other words, short of like getting an incredibly strong pry bar in all these little tiny cracks, that's not going anywhere. Yeah. So, the, the thought is that if you can't hitch up to it, I mean, there's just no way you can pull it away. Right. And short of putting the chains on your vehicle and wobbling down the road at one mile an hour, this is going to stay where it's meant to stay. That's a really clever setup. Yeah, fantastic. And is the tow box, or, or the tow box? storage box, yeah, is that, uh, does that come with every trailer, no, or is that an add-on? That's an option. The tongue box is totally empty, too. Oh, okay. So unlike many other trailer manufacturers who put batteries in there, mm -hmm. converters, sometimes propane tanks and things like that, mm -hmm. we've hidden those in discrete places throughout the trailer, so we make room in this box, so it's totally empty. Oh. I mean, that's just for gear, yeah. whatever you want to put in there. Fantastic. Well, it looks great. I love the front of the uh, of the trailer. I'd love to take a look at the Pika and learn a little more about that. Yeah. So, Kevin, last time we met, the Pika didn't exist. So, I'd love to just learn a little bit about the Pika and uh, and what makes it different from the classic model. Got it. Yep. Well, the Pika has come about because we felt there needed to be another trailer that didn't have the bulk of, say, the classic. Sure. Because, as I said earlier, the classic is five by ten mm -hmm. body. 
the Piper is only four and a half by eight. Okay. Right? Yeah. So it's a lot more nimble. Mm -hmm. It can do things that the Classic might not be able to do. Okay. It can maneuver a lot better than, say, the Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, the, but the Pica, on the other hand, has a full-size mattress mm -hmm. as opposed to a queen. Yep. It does have a galley. The galley is just the same quality as the Classic, mm -hmm. but it lacks the sink, the plumbing system. Okay. Uh, it lacks the ability to put both a stove and a fridge. We can put a fridge in here, but it, it basically takes away from drawers and the door. Okay. So you have to decide. Mm -hmm. It gives people an option. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, the Pica has a countertop. The countertop is a little narrower and shorter, of course. Okay. One, of the, one of the things that, that really stands out to me here in the back that seems like it's a custom option is this topo map countertop. This is really cool. Tell me about that. Yeah, yeah this topo map is totally custom design. So we have a program where it downloads USGS topo maps. We then have to stitch all those maps together, uh -huh. supply our laminate manufacturer a large file, and the large file then they take and they print laminate for us. So we can do literally any custom topo map you <laughs> choose yeah. in the United States. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I love the Pica. I love the simplicity. It's still the same beautiful quality uh, and, you know, and, and level of detail that you get with the other so this is beautiful. Cool. So tell me a little bit about the inside of the Pica, Kevin. Well, as you can see, the mattress is the biggest difference. Now, the mattress is a full-size mattress. It's 54 by 75, but the actual room you had is more like 54 by 77 inches long. Okay. So it looks really tight from the outside, but it's really comfortable inside here. I mean, there's a lot of people that can easily fit in, inside this mattress. Uh, rather than having cabinetry, because of course the Classic has a lot more room, we put cargo nets everywhere. In other words, you can do a lot with cargo nets, a little hook down shelves. In other words, there's a lot of little spaces that you can put here. Uh, even though the Pica is really small, the Pica has two doors, two windows, and a skylight. That's standard in every one of our trailers, including the Pica. Cool. Uh, you can see, I mean, the windows and the skylight, just it just feels like you're in, in the daylight. It's very open. Yeah, and a it's, lot a, of it's a cloudy day, but it's really bright inside here. Yeah, and this has the same finish from the Classic. Yep, the same waterborne, low VOC finish. It has a fan. Uh, even the skylight has our shade. We believe that everybody should have a shade even when they get the skylight so that you know you have either privacy or the ability to close off the light. It's just absolutely beautiful. Love this camper. All the wood in this is the same Baltic birch that we use throughout. So that's what we've become quite famous for because we don't scrimp on any of the wood. Even the wood that goes in places that you never see is the Baltic birch. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, I'd love to take a look at the underside and learn a little bit about your sealing process as well. Cool. Okay. So tell me a little bit about how you seal the undercarriage of your trailer. Yeah. Well, the, the bottom is the biggest area of concern, of course. Yeah. It's not just from rain from above, but if you're traveling down the highway thousands of miles, it's just countless amount of water that's mm -hmm. splashing up underneath. Mm -hmm. So many people will do either membranes or coatings or epoxy or whatever. We've gone years ago to a full aluminum sheet so the bottom of every trailer is completely covered in aluminum and then that aluminum bottom is siliconed all the members of the trailer frame. I mean wow. this thing is pretty much waterproof, completely waterproof underneath. Yeah. It would take a lot of abuse to penetrate that aluminum. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. We're really proud about that. Cool. So Kevin, one of the other things I've noticed is that your rack on top doesn't seem like it's off the shelf. It actually seems oh. like it's made for this camper. It is. It's a custom design that we've come up with so that the curvature is very similar, if not exactly the same profile as a trailer. But also, when the trailer is setting level, which it is now, the top of this bar is also setting level. 
Oh. It also gives you the option that if you want to turn into a normal roof rack, where now we have three crossbars, uh -huh. you can add in these pre-designed slots that we've designed into the rack, you can add more bars, thus making it into a full platform. So it's oh. flexibility. Yeah. Again. So we take huh. these, these are, these are laser cut, and then we have them powder coated, and then they're fenced specifically to match the curvature of our trailer. Very cool. And I would imagine that also will take a rooftop tent. Oh yeah, as a matter of fact, we knew that eventually people were going to start putting rooftop tents up there. We've tested it up to 700 pounds. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's quite stout. In other words. <laughs> so it has no problem putting it a rooftop tent. Very cool. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. And again, I love that it just matches the trailer itself. Yeah. Very nice touch. I mean, it's minimalism. You know, it's like yeah. it's just, just enough, but it will absolutely hurt anything you put on. Great. Very cool. Well, Kevin, this has been great. Thank you so much for walking me through both your Pika and your Classic. It's great to see that you guys have continued to deliver on excellent craftsmanship. And I just really appreciate your time today. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Appreciate well, it. wish you the best of luck. Thank you.